Hello and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Today's exciting episode is a collections video where I show you everything that I made and all the UFOs that I finished last month, including this adorable layer cake dress with lots and lots of different layers, mostly in teals and mauve. It's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Perfect jacket. Okay, July 2023 was blue month, navies and blues, because, yeah, I just had a bunch of navy florals that I really wanted to use up. But obviously, <laughs> that was a sale on some um, quilting fabrics, and I got this pink one, and it's just delightful. I love the colour. These sleeves are, um, they were just supposed to be regular puffy sleeves, but I didn't like them that way. So then I sort of um, sewed them up into the sleeve seam and sort of hand stitch them up in there so they're balloon sleeves and they're supposed to look sort of like flowers they're absolutely adorable but yeah I think you have to be in a mood to wear a dress like that so then this one here with the florals sort of layers of roses and plain pink and pink with red dots this one is a midi dress and I was going to make it a maxi dress. Oh, I finally used up this Sydney fabric. I had like a quarter of a yard of quilting fabric for, I don't know, I must have bought it like a decade ago. And it's like, you know, I've moved around quite a bit since then or maybe even longer, maybe 15 years ago. Anyway, it's just managed to, because it was so small, I guess I just kept it. And yeah, whereas normally I would just sort of, any patterns I wasn't using, I sort of, you know, donated them and stuff like that. But for some reason, I kept that bit and I finally used it. So I was quite happy with that. But anyway, the dress on the left, I um, was originally going to make it maxi length, but I ended up making it midi length. And then so the ne the other bits of fabric that I had already sewn together to make that bottom tier of the dress I ended up using in a different dress so yeah I really like this middle one it is spectacular but if you are um, someone with like a chronic fatigue or something like that there is such a difference like weight wise between a maxi dress and a midi dress. So yeah, just be conscious of that. But I mean, if you just used a lighter, like a cotton, um, a, a gauze or a cotton lawn instead of using a cotton poplin or a quilting cotton, I think that would make all the difference too, because I love a maxi dress. They are absolutely gorgeous. But I think as I age, because I make dresses that I want to keep in my wardrobe, I will want to keep in my wardrobe for decades and decades. So I sort of, yeah, have to think about, you know, when I become a, a little old lady, <laughs> Is the weight of the dress going to be a problem then? Not that it's a problem now necessarily. And also that's why the um, sleeve holes on my summer dresses are maybe a little bit larger than you think is appropriate because um yeah at some point you know in in the hotter months you do sweat and if you've ever seen vintage dresses or antique dresses I just absolutely hate those sweat patches that they get under the arms like you know after a dress has been worn for a decade or so so yeah I've had a few snarky comments about how my um, sleeveless dresses the armholes are too big first of all you're never going to wear my clothes <laughs> please be less rude but also yeah I am not a fast fashion person so if your mentality is fast fashion I get why it's triggering to you but yeah I'm just concerned about how my garments will age I guess because for more than a decade all I was making was jackets for myself and it's you you just they take so long to make all I really care about is is it made well will it last will it age well and yeah so now that I'm making dresses they certainly don't take as long but I do want them to last at least a decade or two so yeah I don't consider my items in a fast fashion way I consider how will they age and things like that so yeah Anyway, that's why a lot of my dresses are a little bit, you know, 
they'll be able to ebb and flow with the different shapes of the, I mean, gravity impacts the body and so does, you know, seasons. And so I like making dresses where if you can just wear another layer or two underneath them, you can wear them all year round and things like that. So, and like, I like wearing really loose, breezy things in the warm months. And then in the cooler months, I like being able to fit another layer or two underneath. I love this blue dress in the background that reminds me so much of the opening scenes of The Sound of Music when she's on the mountain. And oh, I love this apricot t sash on the colourful shorter dress. So cute. Okay, well, it's blue month, so we should finally look at some of the navy blues. So um, which ones do I get out next? I forget which ones I filmed next. Oh, okay, we've got the McCall's jacket, which is two fitted and then we've got the two dresses the um the keyhole one on the left that was a really popular video and I totally understand why it is such a gorgeous dress this is it without the tie on and I guess I think I've put it on the mannequin a little bit weirdly because it looks a little frumpy but it's really chic in person it's really chic maybe it's the um the camera can't quite figure out that oh, okay it looks chic now <laughs> I don't know but um I've got a ribbon around the waist as the sash and it's such a pretty dress it's the kind of thing I'd wear to a work um do so it's not really very me it's it's sort of me but I probably wear something more relaxed and maybe with different colors but it's really pretty this is a keyhole dress just the bodice I still haven't made that layer cake dress but yeah, it's a Liberty of London fabric. And I just think the print is, it's a um, sort of historic motifs. And I just love it. It's so pretty. With the Liberty of London, they often use a sort of cream or a parchment white rather than a bleached white. And um, yeah, I really quite like it. There's something, I don't know, a little bit genteel about it. But I also like this floral one. And then we have this dreaded jacket. I bought the pattern because if you look at the picture, it looks like a really boxy, you know, Chanel style jacket that's slightly more cropped than any other jacket pattern that I have. And I was like, oh, good. Finally, a jacket pattern that will, you know, I'm short waisted. So it'll suit me. But yeah, it's the actual pattern is nothing like the the pictures. So I think they just um when they film when they I think they probably made a size fourteen for a purse a model who's a size ten and then they sort of slit the back of the jacket and the back of the sleeves or something. I don't know how they photographed it to make it look like a square when the actual jacket is more like an oblong so yeah it's just really weird and the fit is like if you look at the back of the dress on the left it is beautiful even without the sash on it you really see the curve of the back and it's gorgeous whereas this jacket here a boxy jacket you know it normally does not do you any favors like you can't sort of see how beautiful the line of the body is but yeah this one it just looks so it looks like almost hunchbackish and and then the front it's like goes in so much at the ribs you almost have to remove your bottom two ribs and yeah I was just really disappointed with it and the shoulders there wasn't enough room in the shoulders like I have really small shoulders so it's fine but yeah the ease is just all wrong it's such a weird the mistakes on it are just so weird I think I feel like they let AI have a go at that one and they're never bothered to do any fix anything up even though you know when they did the the shoot they obviously knew that there were problems with it so yeah it's just really weird anyway and then the one on the right is just a layer cake dress out of lots of different navy blue fabrics and I love the skirt of this I love it so much you know how you have some dresses and the skirt is just so much fun to walk in or um so much fun to twirl in and when you're talking to someone and it, the conversation gets a little bit dull you sort of start holding your skirt out this is one of those dresses it is absolutely adorable I love it it's just it's so beautiful it's like a Victorian walking skirt you know there's just so much fabric but it's not 
excess. It's just, it's beautiful. Moves beautifully. The motion is gorgeous. Anyway, what have we got next? Let's go for some of the colourful ones. Oh my gosh, it's the moth print. So um, I will get to the last, the moth print um, quilting cotton in the right one. We'll do that last. Actually, they're butterfly wings. I don't know why I said moth. Anyway, so the one in the middle, the mauve one, is a, it was actually a shirt pattern, and but I'd made it up into a dress. So I think I ended up using the adjustment line at the waist level to do um, the edge end of the bodice. And then I used a long sleeve one that had the tie front. I used the long sleeves from that. I think if I make it again, I'll bring the shoulders in because, yeah, as I said, I've got really small shoulders. But for like an average person, I think this is perfectly fine. I did make the, um, did too many pleats at the bottom of the, like at the cuffs. So what I'm going to do is just unpick a couple of inches, add a cuff band around the bottom and that has like half an inch space on it, just on the inside. So that way I'll be able to slip it off and on my hands easier. And then here's the um, layer cake dress. So it's a whole bunch of different fabrics. There's this gorgeous vintage one with little flowers on it. That's sort of the, what I made the bodice and a couple of the rows on. That's that one there. And this one here is butterfly wings in all different colors. It is so pretty. I love this fabric. I showed this in a sewing vlog last month, but I'd sort of been working on it a little bit with the layer cake dresses. The easiest way for me to make them because there is so much machine sewing involved and I'm not really a fan of machine sewing. I like hand sewing. So um, yeah, I sort of but I love these dresses. I just love them so much. So my compromise was, okay, like I'll do an hour or two hours each night of just sewing, boring sewing where you sew the layers together. And yeah, and sewing these layers together was just an absolute joy because they're so pretty. Yeah, but I think I showed these fabrics in a fabric haul in June maybe. Or I bought them in June, made the fabric haul, then showed it to you in July. And for all of June and July, I was making the um, a couple of these layer cake skirts. And then I eventually finished them in July and showed them to you. But um, yeah, I just sort of did them piece by piece. So I did all the skirts. I did like five skirts. And when they were done and I set the bodice materials aside, so once I finally finished the five skirts, then I rewarded myself by cutting out all the bodices and doing them because a bodice takes a tiny fraction amount of the time to make. And then I sort of put them all together and then showed them in July. But yeah, so worth it. And it's much less painful than making it all in one go because, yeah, those skirts just because it's just acres and acres of seam lines sewing, you know, the 10 layers together. Oh, but totally worth it. But yeah, I found that the, the way the easiest way for me to make them was for just to work on them at an hour or two at a time instead of spending all day Saturday making one dress, just chipping away at several different ones. And then, um, yeah, that was less painful for me. And this pattern, oh, I love this pattern. As soon as I saw this McCall summer dress, as soon as it was released, I was like, oh, definitely want to make that one. It is delightful. So the dress on the left there, but um, I made it with the one tier one, but it was just a little bit short. So I added a different fabric around the bottom just to lengthen it a tiny bit. And most of the dresses I make, I... I usually think, yeah, I'll wear it like that around the house, but when I go outside, I'll put a sash on it. But this one, I love it the way it is. I'm, I think the original in the pattern, you use um, a lot less fabric in the first tier of the dress skirt. Like I think you're only supposed to use a yard and a half, whereas I've used um, two lengths of fabric, which is basically three yards of fabric. Like if you go salvage to salvage, and um, yeah, I really love it. This is another keyhole dress. This is the one I made in the actual keyhole dress video. And the sleeves, like I only had two yards of the fabric and it's brushed cotton. And so for the sleeves, but I wanted to do sleeves. So I made the sleeves out of embroidery on glaze, which is a really thinner fabric. 
and uh, thinner cotton but with embroidery on glaze on it and I really don't like working with embroidery on glaze which is I bought eight yards of that fabric so I'm definitely going to make a couple of dresses out of it but I did not like sewing it because I've got a vintage sewing machine and it does not like sewing over you know really thin cotton and then that has bumps of embroidered thread on it so maybe I'll sew a dress by hand I just listened to a sewing podcast and they had an episode about um, slow fashion October. So I'm definitely doing that in October. Uh, but um, yeah, I quite like the idea of making a garment completely by hand. But yeah, that does take a lot of time. Anyway, the third dress out of these three is my navy blue layer cake dress. I did have another one, that, but this is just navy blue um, sort of a creamy white and white. So it's got the sunflower fabric, it's got multiple flower fabric and it's got the snowdrops. This is a Liberty of London snowdrops fabric and the tie I've used on it is, um, it also looks really gorgeous with a green tie, but I've used the vintage tulips in yellow, navy, blue and white. So yeah, I love this dress. I love it so much. I think it's probably my favourite but there were a lot of gorgeous dresses made in July. But yeah, oh, I love the skirt. I love everything about this dress. It is just, and that Liberty of London fabric. Oh, that top one is a Liberty of London fabric too. This is just a close up of those. I love the flowers in this one. They're just so pretty. And yeah, those three flowers. The snowflake, snowdrop one does have, it, again, it's that Liberty of London sort of parchment creamy white rather than an actual white. But um, I don't know how well it meshes with the other ones which are pure, like that bleached white. But anyway, I like them. It is one of the dresses that just makes me smile. I was getting out the, when I did the this way or that way sewing quiz, I got out 20 dresses and there were so many in the July rack that I wanted to use. Oh, that was me just showing the cuffs of that blue one with the flowers on it because I have to hand stitch them as well. So these are the last three items, I think. So we've got the black dress. Again, this is lovely McCall's pattern. That pink one with the flower petal um, sleeves was also the same one. I think I added even more fabric into the dress in this one. So I think it's like four yards across, all pleated down. It's so pretty. It's like something um, Holly Golightly would have worn in Breakfast at Tiffany's. I love it. Then we have that cropped jacket. It's actually supposed to be about an inch or two longer. But, I mean, I bought that pattern like a month or two ago. And I bought the tweed three, four years ago. So, you know, I didn't really have a choice. I had That was the size of the piece of tweed I had. So I had to sort of crop it a little it's um obviously when you're wearing it, your shoulder blades fill that part out. And that magenta colour is the lining because I bead my jackets. I leave the lining open so that I can access the inside, the internal part of the jacket. So I can bead it and all the thread will be invisible, but it will hold up the you know, maintain the beads for decades. The shape is a little bit odd because it's tulle, so it's sort of more like a sponge, a dry sponge than, yeah, it'll, it'll look better once it's got the weight of beads on it, it'll sit better. So yeah, I just know the difference between what a tweed looks like before being beaded and after being beaded. That one's going to look gorgeous after it's got a tiny bit more weight on it. So here's me just looking at all the sashes potential sashes to pair with this unicorn dress i love this green one and the green seed bead necklaces to go with it i love this so this is the four yard dress the red one in the middle and that's probably my favorite i absolutely love that one and i think with this unicorn one i used three yards of the aqua and one yard of the unicorn fabric it is just delightful. I love it so much. Um, this is one of those, I think I made four of the vintage dresses with the scoop neck or yeah, four bodices. I think two of them are vintage dresses and two of them are layer cake dresses with that scoop. I thought, you know, because I've made like literally a hundred dresses that are sort of high rounded necks, I thought I should do something that's a little bit lower, especially since I tend to wear other layers like a shirt or a, a long sleeve t-shirt underneath them. 
but yeah, I'm I'm going to stick to four of that low scoop neck bodice. I don't like it. I prefer the high end one and I'm absolutely fine to wear a long sleeve t-shirt under. So the black one on the left, I'll be fine to wear a shirt under that or a, um, a, a long sleeve t-shirt as well, or just even a a shirt like in the cooler months that'd be fine for me and I do love this just plain but I also absolutely adore it with this green sash on it I think it's absolutely beautiful I did think about doing another sash with the unicorn one but I yeah I think it sort of washes it out I love the green also see in the background there's my green handbag that's what I would probably take when I wore that dress so yeah perfect for a kid's birthday party. So that's it. I've hung up those two dresses because I have to finish the cuffs on them, but that's everything that I made in July. I have a few tweed jackets that are mostly done. Like I've done the silk lining and I've made the outer jacket, but I just have to sew them together and do that last round of hand stitching. I was hoping to finish them last month, but I didn't get around to it. And I don't think I'll have time this month either, unfortunately. So I guess they're going to be September's job. But um, what can you do? Some months are just busier than others or, you know, you don't want to, you don't really feel like sewing. I'm so proud of the way I tied this. So I tied it around the waist twice and then just with the tiny ends, I tied them into the little pasta bow. So cute. And I love this sound of music dress, but I do sing all the songs from that musical, even when I just look at it. So yeah, we'll have to hide that in the back of the wardrobe, I think if I get too sick of the songs of that musical. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Hope you were inspired to get some fabrics out of your fabric sash and make a few last summer dresses. Because, yeah, making a simple dress is so fun. And they're just, you know, they're small amount of effort, absolute maximum amount of joy that you get out of them. I also really love the mix of colours I used last month. There's some, these bright pinks are absolutely gorgeous. Love that leaf fabric. And, but also these navy ones. Oh, I love navy. It's such a beautiful understated colour. And yeah, the, like the Liberty of London print with the red and pink flowers on the left it's pretty understated as well whereas there are these this hilarious one here it's quite colorful when you look at it up close but from far away oh and the unicorn fabrics oh my gosh that one was gorgeous so yeah I quite like the mix of fabrics that I worked with last month I wish I had finished more jackets but what can you do anyway thanks again for watching and yeah happy sewing